Hello everyone, welcome. Scoliosis. Of all of the spinal issues that I have had, scoliosis is the one that has taught me so much about myself. And coupled with my scoliosis, coupled with the tools of Iyengar Yoga, has really been just an eye-opening combination, truly. It's truly taught me so much about this body that I'm in and about um, how to spark some new awareness, intelligence in my body, in my embodiment that I didn't know how to access before. So that's what we're going to get into today. I want to show you just one asana. Admukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. We're going to do it a few different ways. And as we go through it, I'd like to show you the exploration that I, uh, I like to do to kind of respond to my own nuances, to respond to the curves in my, in my spine and how I might adjust accordingly. So if you are dealing, if you are working with scoliosis in your own body, I trust that you'll find this very interesting and there may be ways to apply the information to your own curves. Um, of course, everybody's different. Our spinal curves may be different. So take everything um, within a context and then see if you can apply it to your own, uh, the specificity of your own structure. Okay, now if you don't have a scoliosis, I. I think that you're going to find this practice really interesting as well because we all have differences right side and left and essentially all this all that I'm doing here is is using that as as a guide as a framework for exploration and it's fascinating yeah so give it a go um, and see if you enjoy this kind of approach to practice. You know, I get a lot of questions from people about what to practice when you're practicing on your own. And what I'm gonna show you today, I do this often, right? Sometimes you can have a sequence and go through a practice. A lot of times I'll just take one asana and do it many different ways. And it's a very, um, satisfying, it's creative, it's interesting, it's a great way to go through a practice. All right, I will stop there and um, let's begin. Hey there. If you have a cranky back, stiff neck, if you're overweight, anxious, or if you simply don't look, feel, or resonate with the images of yoga on social media, you will definitely want to check out my online course, Iyengar Yoga Fundamentals. I have a right thoracic left lumbar curve. It's like an S. And so how it presents is this is the right side of my body. And so this side here is convex. If I exaggerate it, I'm a little bit like this, right? So this side gets short, this side sticks out. And then in the lumbar, portion of my spine, it's the opposite. This is convex and this side kind of hikes up and is a little bit short here, okay, and is concave. So in the Admukha Svanasana, the first thing that I would do <laughs> is I come up and into the pose here and on my concave side, so that's going to be my left side for the thoracic, for the upper part of my back. I'm going to take my left arm and I'm going to move it just slightly to the left and then a little bit further forward. And so what I'm doing here is I'm giving that left side a little extra length because if you remember, I said that it was short. Okay? So for the thoracic, your arms are going to be really effective in helping you access that area. I take my left arm ever so slightly out to the left and you start to feel how much space is there between your neck and your upper arm. And that's how you can gauge, right? So you're not necessarily trying to over exaggerate, right? So even if I take my arms up to the ceiling here, okay? 
this arm will, it's like I can feel energetically, this is closer in, okay? This side has more space, and it, this is all related. So in the Admukha Svanasana, I want to take my left arm, shift it just slightly, not way out, but just a little bit out to try and create an evenness here in through the collarbones. Okay, the basic instructions, roll your upper arms out, like things like that, of course, do that. And then walk that short side a little further forward. Okay, so again, if you see from the front, this is the tendency. This here is short. This is sticking out, it's long. If I take this arm and I reach it a little further forward, it's gonna stretch that side of the chest. Okay, and that's what you want, okay? Feel free to do this with me, give it a try. Lift up and back, and if you're dealing with a right thoracic, or you know, you can, you can do it on both sides, right? So if you don't have the structural scoliosis, you can try this on both sides and just see how it affects things. Take that left arm, move it slightly to the left, and then extend forward, 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 forward. And feel the length on the right side of your body, Feel the length on the left side and compare. Also pay attention to, sort, to the, um, the texture, the sensitivity here, the alertness on the front and back body. A lot of times, this is at least this has been my experience, where you're concave, so for me it's here, where you're concave, there's almost in that hollowness, there's a lack of sensation. There's a lack of feeling. And so as you make these adjustments, you may start to find that all of a sudden there is some sensation there. You make some feeling happen, which is exciting, interesting. Okay, now the other little thing you can do here to change it up is not only as you move this hand forward and a little out, but cup see i've got this shape here with my fingers cup the, the hand like this so this hand is higher the other one is flat this hand is a little bit higher and as you suck up into the palm of the hand you also suck up into the armpit and you may find that that right sh uh, excuse me left shoulder blade on the back side feels more full it's concave, so it's dropping in, but as you suck up into the hand, suck up into the armpit, see if it creates a little bit more uh, volume in that shoulder blade region. Okay, go ahead. Let's try this again. Okay, Admukha Svanasana, lift up and back. And then on the left side, cup the fingers, take the hand a little bit out to the left, and then walk those fingers further, further forward. Okay, observe the shape, the cup shape in the palm of the hand, and also suck up into the armpit, and then feel what happens in the shoulder blade region. Okay, rotate your upper arms out, push down through your hand, the right hand pushes down, left fingertips push down, from the hip corners lift up and back, and Again, observe the effect. Feel the side body, and again, observe those shoulder blades. Okay, and then release. Pause. Okay, notice what's going on. Now, if you're working with, in fact, a right thoracic curve, um, then you may only want to do this on one side. But if you're more on just a journey of exploration, please feel free to do both sides and see where it has an effect. Okay, now something else you can do that's sort of working with a similar principle is instead of taking just a cupped finger, you can actually put height and work with a flat palm, which is similar but different, right? Every little thing does make a difference. So you can take, for example, a brick, like so, and same idea, you can have it just slightly off to the side and have the brick a little bit forward, 
okay? And then you lift up and back. Okay, now here you can walk that hand a little bit more forward on the brick and find, you know, what is the right length there for you. Now in this presentation, you have the benefit of being able to push strongly down into both hands as you reach the hips up and back and move the thighs back, heels down, all that good stuff. Okay, same idea. Suck up into the armpit, right? Don't let this area hang down on both sides there. Lift up and feel the back body. Where are you stiff? Where are you dull? Where are you alert? Where is there movement? And then release. Okay, I always find this fascinating because the brick is actually, you know, it's pretty thick. And I put the brick underneath and I'm just amazed at how even <laughs> I actually feel. So, which is quite remarkable, right? You can experiment with different heights. You can take, I sometimes I work with a little pad and I just take a small pad place at that underneath. You can taste, take a little piece of mat. Sometimes if you've got like an old mat, you cut it up into small pieces. You can just fill the palm of your hand there with a small piece and sort of see what that does. So as you start to explore these ideas, you can, you can refine a little bit to really see what, how much is needed for you and for your structure. Okay, we can apply a very similar principle as well for the lower spine, for the lumbar spine. Some people will have a curve only in their upper back, some will have a curve only in the lower back, um, and sometimes the scoliosis is more central. Okay, it takes, it takes many different shapes and it really depends, it's very individual. The same way that I said that the arms will be an excellent way to access into the thoracic spine, the legs are a very effective way for accessing into the lower spine. Okay, so in this variation, you'll take your Admukha Svanasana again, and instead of moving one hand a little bit forward, you're gonna move one foot a little bit forward, okay? And in my case, with the right thoracic left lumbar, it's the right side, this side here that's concave, okay? So I'm gonna move my right foot just a little further back. I think Banjo is blocking it, but a little further back than the other one, okay? And then I reach my hips up and back and I start to explore the length of my side waist. Okay, I'm gonna see here, you can, I'm gonna turn around. You can definitely take support. You can put your hands into a wall. You can grip the side of the mat if you like. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Let's see here if you'll be able to see better. Okay, so you take your Admukha Svanasana and then you take one leg and move it just a little bit back. So for me again, I'm taking the right foot a little bit back and because I've opened up quite so much, you know, it is a challenge for me to get my heels down in this position, but I can still work with that intention. Okay, turn your upper arms out, push the wall, push the floor, and then reach the corners of the hips up and back. I love this pose, <laughs> I really do. It feels so good. And just opens up that side waist a little more as you take that leg back, okay? There is one other way that you can work with, again, same principle, same principle. It's this idea of being uneven in order to be more even, okay? And you can do that um, bending the knees, bending the knees. Okay, so here, you'll lift into your Admukha Svanasana and then bend the knees. 
And then now that you've taken the hamstrings out of the equation, you can, can you see what I'm doing? Just shift the hips back, right? So take the right hip and lift it up and back a little more. Bring it back to center. Left hip up and back. Bring it back to center. Now for me, again, my right lower side, my right lumbar side there is the one that's short, that's concave. So I'm gonna take that right hip up higher, up higher and lengthen from my wrist. I push the floor and from the wrist, reach the whole side trunk towards the waist there. And then keeping that length now, I can roll the buttocks up and unfold the legs, unfold the legs and see if I can maintain it. It's not gonna be easy, right? So it's easier to keep the length when the legs are bent, but then see, maybe you can just capture a little extra length as you straighten, as you straighten. Admukha Svanasana. Okay, so one other way that I love to work in Admukha Svanasana, I'm not gonna demonstrate it, but if you have ropes, that is also an excellent way because you can have the rope over top of you and just stabilize the hips. So it's literally like someone's holding the pelvis back and then you can walk one arm a little further forward than the other. I mean, it gives you such beautiful traction. So that would be another way to work. So there you have it. Several different ways. How many did we do? We did two, but with variations on each. So I'm gonna say four, <laughs> four different ways. We did hand to the forward, to the side, and then with height. And then on the leg side, we walked one foot back further than the other, and then also worked from bent to straight. So that's actually five different ways, different techniques, approaches of working in your Admukha Svanasana, in your downward facing dog, with scoliosis. Let me know which one you like best. Let me know if it works for you, if you're dealing with a thoracic curve, a lumbar curve, if you've also got the S curve like I do. Um, and yeah, again, yoga has been, Iyengar yoga, the approach, the way that we work in this practice has been tremendously helpful for helping me manage the pain that's associated with my scoliosis and also in just a broader sense giving me so much um, satisfaction from better understanding myself <laughs> yeah let me know if that lands for you if that if that makes sense okay i'm gonna end it here thank you so much and I look forward to practicing with you again another time.